Jungle perch larvae tanks should be lit to at least 2500 lux, be gently aerated and heated to between 27 and 28 degrees Celsius. Use a 16-8 or a 14-10 day-night hours time sequence. Tanks should be filled with 1 micron filtered UV treated seawater and salinity should exceed 32 parts per thousand. Jungle perch can be stocked into rearing tanks as embryos or yolk sac larvae. Stock them at a density of 20 per litre. A central standpipe with drain holes to set the water level should be screened with a 40 micron filter to retain copepod nuclei and jungle perch larvae. Larvae will not feed for the first two days after hatch. They will generally be inactive and distributed throughout the water column. From at least 24 hours after hatch, T-ISO should be added to larval rearing tanks. Initially, add 30 to 40 litres to a 600 litre volume rearing tank. Then, 15 to 20 litres of T-ISO can be added per day. Copepods should also be added to jungle perch rearing tanks 24 hours after hatch. Stock between one and three adult copepods per mill of rearing tank water. Adult copepods will be too large for first feeding jungle perch larvae, but a day after stocking, copepod nauplii will appear. Three days after hatch, jungle perch larvae are ready to feed. They begin to aggregate near the surface. Their digestive tracts are much more developed. Three day old larvae are noticeably more active than one and two day old larvae. Between days 4 and 7, jungle perch larvae inflate their swim bladders. During this phase it is very important to use surface skimmers to remove any surface oils and surface protein. The well of the skimmer can be regularly blotted with cloth wipes or paper towels. By seven days after hatch, jungle perch larvae are large enough to feed on more advanced stage nauplii and early copepodite stages. The larvae still tend to aggregate near the surface. This makes them relatively easy to harvest in containers to transfer to tubs of seawater and then to ponds for grow out.
larvae can be reared to more advanced stages in tanks, but it is much easier to sustain copepod supply by pond rearing. 